So the beginning of the end, when you're dealing with a narcissist, right? The devaluing, when they start the devaluing of you and you realize it's a never ending cycle. What is devaluing? Why do they do it? Let's talk about it. My name is Lise Colucci and I'm a life coach from Queen Being. And let's just jump right in, okay? So there's lots of ways a narcissist can devalue you. What we need to understand is that a narcissist doesn't just love and then build healthy attachment and continue with that healthy attachment. What they do is they love bomb, which in that state, they have put you up on a pedestal. They are in the idealization phase of the relationship. Everything is going perfect because you see them as perfect because they are able to spin things so that what you're looking at is the mask that they're wearing, that they wear in the beginning, which is an, a, a mix of all the masks that they've worn for other people to make themselves interesting, to show you who they think that you want to see so that you give them praise and you give them attention and then they can flood all that attention back onto you and it stays there for a little while because sure, anyone can stay in that fantasy for a little while. How fun, right? No, because in reality, what happens is reality sets in. You start to have real relating. When there's real relating and there's expectations and there's um, assumptions going on or where there's just life happening between two people and the reality of who someone is starts to show, the narcissist has to devalue you. They will tear you down for being completely human. They don't even really need a reason or to, for you to have any flaws or anything wrong with you. They will make them up, okay? They start to see you in that light because that's their way of relating to people. They do this puts you beneath them as you go deeper and deeper and sadder and sadder, they get more and more power over you so that every time that they give you a bit of love bombing or a bit of attention, boom, you're lifted back up. And that creates a cycle where you will not leave. They somehow know this, okay? It, it works. So let's talk about some ways that they might devalue. They might talk down to you covertly. Have you had a narcissist just, or a toxic person of any kind, just, put you down in subtle ways or make jokes at your expense or like say things like, Oh, that's great. But, or yeah, that's really good. But you know, and just sort of diminish and slowly put you down. Have you had them find faults? Okay. Another thing is they might find faults in things that they once admired. So this is super frustrating. You think, Oh my gosh, they like this about me. They like that about me, a person, you know, and then the things that they liked about you are suddenly the things that they're complaining about. I love your sense of humor. You're so funny. Ha ha ha. Why are you always making jokes? Okay. You know, they criticize your emotions. You're too sensitive. You've been told that. Have you been told that your emotions don't matter? Have you had them dismissed, criticized, or um, told that, that they're inaccurate? Yeah, that's what they do. That's a form of devaluing. They will bait you into an argument. That's another form of devaluing. They are basically saying, you are not worthy of a conversation. Let's bait you into an argument so I don't have to have that conversation with you and I don't have to have any real discussions. They'll smirk at you. Have you been smirked at? Oh yeah, that's always fun. They will build you up a tiny bit just to knock you down. They will build you up in public and knock you down privately. They will talk about your successes to other people but then complain about the thing you're successful about in your own life. They will point out your flaws. They will point out your flaws in a way that embarrasses you and humiliates you. They will have no concern for your well being. Have you had that happen? Ever been sick around a narcissist? <laughs> Ever had something happen where you need support and they're not there? They're not there. In fact, they're not only not there, they make it about them. And they not only make it about them, but they expect you to pep right up and be off doing whatever it is to serve them. So another thing that they might do when they devalue you is shame and blame, a lot of shame and blame. That shame and blame sticks, right? And we'll carry it on. Have you carried it on? I know most of us have carried on that shame and blame for a long time. They'll do things that put you at risk and they have no value for your own safety, your own life or your children's safety or your children's life. They just can be risk takers, especially the more sociopathic type, you know, where they're just, they don't care. 
they're diminishing you in all ways that they can. The joking put downs and then the I'm just kiddings. Have you had that happen? That's never pleasant. And that is hurtful because they're laughing at your expense. It's bullying. Another thing is they might put down your friends, your likes, your passions, anything that you find dear and lovely in life, your animals, whatever it is, your children, they will put them down. They can't handle anything being more important than them, right? So they will damage your things, your belongings, and they will ruin special events or holidays. These are all ways in which a narcissist devalues situations and you within that situation and you personally. So what is the point? Why are they doing this? If they supposedly want things to be nice and they want all this attention, why are they doing this? Well, it gives them power. It gives them control. It. So here's a, a, a an actual story from the mouth of a narcissistic person, okay? They said to me, wow, I haven't had the thing happen that always happens. And I said, what? And they said, usually by now, I feel really disappointed by people. I haven't had that happen. Just don't let that happen and we'll be okay. It happened in such a flash that I didn't think twice. Now I hear something like that and I think, okay, you just told me a truth, right? But what they were describing is the devalue cycle. The devalue cycle hadn't hit in the normal time frame they were used to it hitting in. I also had another narcissistic person that was a friend that I realized was a narcissist after they made the statement. I said, hey man, why are you still single? And it was just a talk, we were just chatting, right? And he said, oh, you know, all the girls I date are boring. I said, they're boring. And he goes, well, I don't know that they're really boring, but I get really bored of them. And I said, oh, well, that's, that's too bad. What happens? He goes, I don't know. I think, I think I just have an expectation of people and no one can meet it. I think I just, I think I just get bored. And I think when I'm bored, I just like, don't want to be around them. And like, it went on and on and on, right? This is his way of devaluing. He went into this complacent boredom. He was a very cerebral type narcissistic person. And I realized in that moment, this is a narcissistic person. Okay, yeah, I think I'll back out of this friendship. Anyway, so let's talk about other reasons they might do this. So is actually a reminder oftentimes of their own core wound. They will repeat their own core wound through inflicting it on other people. And by doing that, I think they must get a sense of power over their own pain. It's the quintessential hurt people hurt people, which is a phrase I don't actually agree with 100% of the time, but in the case of narcissistic people, absolutely. Another thing is it restores the power. It restores their feeling of their own superiority over you. If they build you up too high and you're equal to them, that is not gonna fly for too long. That only flies as long as it's a reflection on them to be around you. As soon as you are a real human being with expectations, needs, and desires of your own, boom, you're devalued because they need that power restored where they're superior. It maintains their own delusion and illusion of not needing anyone. It maintains their, basically their avoidant attachment, often projection. They're projecting onto you the things they feel about themselves or they think about themselves or that have happened to them, right? So there's all these reasons for the devaluing. It doesn't feel good. What you need to understand is that it is a cycle and it will continue. And that once you're in that love bomb and devalue cycle, you're on the hamster wheel, okay? And you're just running over and over and over, repeating, repeating, repeating with this toxic person until you jump off the hamster wheel and you go a different path away from this person. There isn't a way to fix the devaluing. It's not yours to fix, okay? Once this narcissistic person has gotten in this cycle, they're in their cycle. It isn't about you, it is about them, okay? None of it is about the survivor of this stuff. It is about the toxic person because they're the ones bringing this devaluing and toxicity into the relationship. That's what I got for today on the devalue cycle of narcissism. If you need any help, as always, check out the information in the main description of every video. Let me know in the comments if you have other examples or if you want to talk more about devaluing, okay? And I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to hit subscribe and the thumbs up. My name is Lise Colucci, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.